Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Getting back to 100% capacity, the new plan Michigan restaurants are proposing to Governor Whitmer. A violent hit and run crash on New Year's Eve killed three people. Weeks later, police say they finally identified the driver responsible. But we begin with Storm Tracker 4 and the next round of snow headed our way. Glad you're with us tonight at 11. It won't be anything like Monday's storm, but it looks like uh, we will be needing the shovels again. Ben, it looks like the snow will start just in time to disrupt tomorrow afternoon's commute. Yeah, that's the target that we're looking at, Kim. I think the morning is going to be fine. Maybe a couple flakes out there, but it is going to be that afternoon evening drive where we'll see widespread snow across the area. We can already see it on the radar, but it is further to the south. The one thing you can notice is that general track is a little bit further south and east than the last one. That's why we're expecting to see less snow. And even though some of those radar returns are getting close to us, you can tell on Storm Tracker 4, as they move into northern Indiana and Ohio, they are starting to dry out. So again, we're really not anticipating any snow tonight. Tomorrow, just a couple rogue snow showers in the first part of the day. But once we get past midday, and especially in the afternoon and evening, you can see just about everybody seeing some light snow. It's not going to come down at quite the rate we saw on Monday. But it is going to be with us through the nighttime hours and at least through the start of Friday morning. That's what we're expecting by the end. And we're not done for the week. You can see by Sunday, we're going to get the shovels out again. And those accumulations could be a little bit more than what we're going to get on Thursday and Friday. So we'll look at all of those numbers. And if we can finally get these temperatures under control all in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. President Biden's trip to West Michigan has been postponed due to weather in the Washington area. The president was set to tour Pfizer's manufacturing facility in Portage. That's where Pfizer's vaccine, of course, is being produced. That visit is now scheduled for this Friday. The Michigan Lodging and Restaurant Association is calling on Governor Whitmer to reassess the current 25% capacity restrictions. Their plan includes guidelines tied to COVID positivity rates, which right now is just above 3% in the state. Originally, the governor said she would reassess those restrictions after February 21st. But when school sports returned, she opted to keep the restrictions in place until March 29th. Our Mara McDonald is live in St. Clair Shores. Mara, restaurants want action. They want it now. They do, Kimberly, and their lobbying groups are really pushing it, and they are extremely hopeful that the governor will stick to her original thought, which was we're going to reassess dine-in after February 21st, because the bottom line is anybody who's open at 25 percent isn't making any money, isn't breaking even. They're essentially staying open to, you know, remind their customers that they're still there. This is my grandfather that started it all. Come inside Godino's in St. Clair Shores and everything has been thoughtfully socially distanced. And while the interior is design forward, this is so much more than a restaurant or a small business. Oh, it is a family legacy. Um, my grandfather started this business in the 40s in Detroit. Gaudino started as her grandparents' meat market and has morphed into a chic Italian spot where you're equally at home having a lamb chop or a pizza. And the current occupation rule from the state means while they are open, it's not easy. We went from a little over 40 employees to a little over 10. And uh, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. What the MRLA sent the governor is a roadmap for getting restaurants back into some semblance of financial stability by tying COVID positivity rates to density. We're just a little over 3% right now, which would mean instead of the 25% occupancy, the MRLA suggests it be up to 50%, of course, with masks and distancing. It's, it's been a year. I think it is time and this industry is owed some more concrete planning from, from the administration that can be driven by metrics that gives them a clear understanding of what might be coming and when. When asked about this today, the governor was noncommittal. Amato would love to see a bump in density to 50%, but even then, it's not really a break even. But anything at this point is progress. 25%, we're not even, it's not even a break even. It's, you can't pay your bills at 25%. You just can't. Back here live, the governor may have been non-committal when asked about this today, but she did say that the roadmap certainly could be part of a conversation going forward. Sure is clear those lobbying groups hope that conversation is something that happens next week. We're live in St. Clair Shores tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4.
Yeah, all right, Mara. Now, tonight's coronavirus headlines. New studies are looking at how vaccines protect against these COVID variants. Variants, the, rather. The studies published in the New England Journal of Medicine suggest both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines can protect against COVID variants, despite a drop in how many antibodies they produce against those variants. Closer to home, Detroit residents 60 and older with chronic medical conditions, including cancer, asthma and heart conditions can now get a vaccine at the TCF Center. Today, the state of Michigan reporting 939 new cases and 11 more deaths. Major break tonight in a deadly New Year's Eve crash that killed three people. Detroit police are looking for 37 year old Victor Ross, who they believe is the man who caused the crash that killed a married couple and an elderly man. Jason Colthorpe live at Detroit Police Headquarters tonight. Police desperately trying to locate this man, Jason. That's exactly right, Devin, and they've got more than a dozen warrants out for this guy for murder to causing and leaving the scene of a deadly accident and many more, which is likely why this guy has disappeared. And now police are reaching out to all of you out there watching for your help. And if you happen to see the coverage of this crash on New Year's, you most likely haven't forgotten it. It was a gruesome scene in Corktown New Year's Eve. Two vehicles ripped apart in a devastating accident and three people killed. Rodney Rodriguez had just picked up his wife Marlene from work at the MGM Grand Casino and they were heading home. Their Mercury Sable was about to turn from Michigan Avenue onto 16th Street when a Cadillac CT6 hit them at high speed. A witness who tried to help described just how awful the accident was. I was going to try to perform first aid, but it didn't make no use. And the other and the other person that was inside the vehicle was so bad, I didn't even want to look at it. It was just that horrific. The third victim, an 87 year old man who died at the hospital, was a passenger in the Cadillac. Detroit police believe this man, 37 year old Victor Ross, was behind the wheel. They say he left the scene and is still on the run. Warrants have been issued for 13 charges against Ross, including three counts of murder. That's a Southwest family that certainly would like some justice for what happened there. Ross, by the way, is five foot nine inches tall, is about 170 pounds, and he has green eyes. Detroit police say give them a call if you know anything or if you have any information, or you can call Crime Stoppers at 1 800 Speak Up, and if you do that, you will remain anonymous. We're at Detroit Police Headquarters tonight. Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Hey, Jason, thank you. State police and the Coast Guard spent the night searching for a man who a witness reported fell through the ice on the Detroit River. The witness says the man walked out onto the ice just after 5 p.m. and then started jumping up and down until he fell through. It happened near the bridge to Belle Isle. Coast Guard crews conducted a search of the river but were unable to find anything. A former Hazel Park police detective accused of embezzling $68,000 while on the job is going to face a judge tomorrow morning. 45 year old Sean Boucher accused of taking the forfeiture funds for his own personal use between 2013 and 2017. Today he turned himself into state police after being charged with several felonies, including conducting a criminal enterprise and embezzlement. He faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. He'll be arraigned tomorrow at 10 a.m. An orange barrel alert for anyone headed to Detroit this weekend. Demolition work requires closing both directions of I-94 between I-75 and Connor Avenue. That starts Friday night. MDOT is replacing the Frontiac Street overpass. The new bridge will replace the current structure that was built back in 1954. All lanes on I-94 are expected to reopen by 5 Monday morning. Still ahead, Ford rolling out its plans to go all electric overseas. And how soon the Dearborn automaker will be fully electric in Europe. Coming up. A couple's disappearance in West Michigan set off a massive search before their bodies were discovered in the woods. Who's now facing charges in their murders. But first, millions still without power as the energy crisis in Texas is getting worse. Now even more severe weather expected on top of that. It's next.